Hi everyone. Today we will discuss about the drugs acting on cell wall synthesis. Bacterial cell is having an outer membrane which is very important for the survival of the bacteria. And suppose this is the inside of the bacterial cell and this is the outside. So outer membrane is essential for the bacteria. And within the cytoplasm we can observe the DNA core along with the ribosomes and few of the plasmids. But most of the drugs are going to target on the outer membrane that's what we call the cell membrane. So today in this video we will see the drug target sighting on the cell membrane, how they are going to affect the cell wall synthesis as well as the functions of the cell membrane. So within the bacterial cell we can observe a lipophilic membrane inside the cell as well as we can observe another lipophilic membrane outside the cell. So the inner lipophilic membrane is nothing but the plasma membrane and the other lipophilic membrane is the outer membrane. So in between the plasma membrane and outer membrane we can observe a peptidoglycan layer which is responsible for the rigidity of the cell membrane as well as resistance offered by the cell membrane. So for bacteria whether it is a gram positive or gram negative the peptidoglycan layer is very important even they are going to differ by their thickness. The gram positive bacteria will have more thickness than the gram negative bacteria. So now let us see the different types of drug targets acting on the cell wall synthesis as well as on the cell membrane and they are useful as the antibacterials. What are the building blocks for this peptidoglycan layer? Now the peptidoglycan layer is important for the cell wall of the bacteria but what are the building blocks for this peptidoglycan layer? We can observe two important building blocks one is the N-acetyl glucosamine. You can see the glucosamine where the amino group is attached with an acetyl group. So this is the N-acetyl glucosamine. Similarly another building block is having similar structure to the N-acetyl glucosamine and you can observe that the OH group at the third portion is going to be modified and it is going to be attached with an acidic side chain. Now this is the N-acetyl muramic acid. So now N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid are the two building blocks which are going to be repeated within the peptidoglycan layers. Now let us indicate the M as the N-acetyl muramic acid and G as the N-acetyl glucosamine. Then they will form a peptidoglycan layer like this with uh, muramic acid is having a tetrapeptide chain and uh, which is then attached with the glucosamine. And this muramic acid is also having a pentacyclic glycine peptide chain at the third amino acid. Now this glycine residues can form a cross link with the ender muramic acid so that they are going to form a, a mesh like structure on the cell wall. So in this way muramic acid and glucosamine are going to form the cell wall and here they are going to form a cross link between these two muramic acid units through the pentapeptide glycine chain. So now let us go in detail how these building blocks are going to be prepared and how the cross linkage is going to be formed and what are the different types of drug targets. Now one of the important building block is the N-acetyl muramic acid which is present with the tripeptide chain initially and attached with the UDP. And another building block is the N-acetyl glucosamine which is again attached with the UDP. And for cross-linking of this peptidoglycan layer, the bacteria requires a pentapeptide glycine residue. So this is called as a peptide chain which is commonly denoted as PEP. So this peptide chain is responsible for the cross-linking within the peptidoglycan layers. Apart from these, we have already seen that muramic acid is having the tetrapeptide chain. But here we have shown only tripeptide. That means it should have one more amino acid. So another important component is the dipeptide where it is having the two amino acids only one amino acid is going to be retained with the muramic acid. All these are required for the synthesis of the peptidoglycan layer but one of the problem is that these components should be reached to the outside of the membrane where the peptidoglycan layer is going to be formed but the muramic acid cannot cross this uh, cell membrane so that it cannot be transported to the outside of the membrane. Now how the cell wall can be synthesized? In order to transport these components to the outside of the cell, bacteria will have one of the lipid carrier which we call the C55 lipid carrier. Because of the 55 carbon it is highly lipophilic. So this C55 lipid carrier can travel along the cell membrane 
and it can transport these uh, building blocks to the outside of the cell. Now, the first step in the cell wall since is the addition of this dipeptide onto the tripeptide chain on the muramic acid so that it becomes the pentapeptide chain. And after that, this muramic acid can be attached with the C55 lipid carrier so that it is going to release the UMP. That means one of the phosphate group is going to be retained with the C55 lipid carrier and it is going to form the component like this. Now, you can observe that. The C55 lipid carrier is attached with the muramic acid, but now the muramic acid is having the pentapeptide chain. Three amino acids are already present on the muramic acid and two amino acids are going to be added in this first step. And one of the phosphate group is going to be retained with the C55 lipid carrier. So UDP is converted into UMP. In this way, the muramic acid is ready for the peptidoglycan synthesis. Then the second building block is the glucosamine. Now the glucosamine can be attached to this muramic acid, but here it does not require any phosphate group. So here the UDP is going to be released where the glucosamine is going to be attached like this. Now you can observe that the C55 lipid carrier is attached with the muramic acid with the pentapeptide chain as well as the glucosamine. And finally, another step that is required is the addition of a pentapeptide chain to the muramic acid. So here pentameric glycine residue is going to be attached to this muramic acid. But where it is attached? It is going to be attached to the third amino acid on the muramic acid. And you have to remember that it is not attached at the fourth one or fifth one. It is attached at the third amino acid. Now everything is ready. So the C55 lipid carrier is going to be attached with the muramic acid as well as glucosamine, the two important building blocks that are required for the peptidoglycan layer. Now this C55 lipid carrier can transport these building blocks across the membrane so that they are going to be transported to the outside of the membrane. So at the outside already the growing chain of peptidoglycan layers are present. Now this uh, newly formed building block should be attached to the growing chains of the peptidoglycan layers. In order to do that, the last amino acid which is present on the muramic acid should be detached from this complex. So when this uh, amino acid is going to be detached from this, the C55 lipid carrier is also going to be detached from this. Now these building blocks which are ready for uh, cross-linking, they can be attached with the growing chain and they form a cross-link with the growing chain. This is a very crucial step in the cell wall synthesis as the cell wall is going to be slowly growing with every transport of the building block across the cell membrane. And here you can observe that the cross link is formed between the third amino acid of the one muramic acid to the fourth amino acid of the ender muramic acid. So cross link is uh, formed between the third and fourth amino acids of the two different muramic acid units. So these steps are going to be recycled and for that the C55 lipid carrier should be reactivated. But here we can observe that C55 lipid carrier is having the diphosphate bond. So it can be converted into monophosphate by removal of an inorganic phosphate. So again now the C55 lipid carrier can bring another building block across the cell membrane so that the peptidoglycan layer can be slowly increased to produce the cell wall in the bacteria. Now let us see the drug targets acting at the different steps in the cell wall synthesis. So the first step is the addition of a dipeptide to the tripeptide chain on the muramic acid. And second drug target is the release of the building block from the C55 lipid carrier. And third drug target is the drugs directly acting on the cell membrane. And the fourth drug target is the drugs acting on the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan layers. And the fifth one is the reactivation of the C55 lipid carrier. So now if we see the drug targets acting on the cell wall synthesis. First one is the addition of dipeptide. Second one, the detachment from the lipid carrier. Third one, depolarization of the cell membrane. This drug target is not acting on the cell wall synthesis, but it is going to form a dysfunction of the cell membrane. And fourth one is the cross-linking between the peptidoglycan layers. Fifth one is the reactivation of the lipid carrier. So the different types of drug targets acting on these five steps. So let us start with the first one, addition of dipeptide. So one of the drug acting on this is the cycloserine. So cycloserine is having the structure like this. And you can observe within the structure, alanine-like structure. So this is the structure of the alanine. Alanine is a simple aliphatic amino acid. 
So cyclosirine is having some structural similarity with the alanine. Because of the structural similarity, cyclosirine can inhibit the addition of this D-alanine dipeptide to the tripeptide on the muramic acid. So this is the tripeptide on the muramic acid. This can be attached with a dipeptide. This dipeptide is made up of the alanine. So this is the D-alanine, D-alanine dipeptide. So this dipeptide is going to be attached to this tripeptide so that it is going to form a pentapeptide chain on the muramic acid. So this step is going to be blocked by cyclosirine. So cyclosirine is going to inhibit the attachment of the dipeptide to the tripeptide on the muramic acid. And this drug is particularly used in the treatment of tuberculosis, but of course it is used as a second line drug in the treatment of tuberculosis because cyclosirine can produce some neurotoxicity as the important side effect. And cyclosirine can also be used in the other mycobacterial infection that is a mycobacterium avium complex MAC, which is an opportunistic infection which can produce the infection in the immunocompromised patients. In these two clinical situations, cyclosirine can be used. So second drug target is a detachment from the lipid carrier. So drugs like vancomycin and trichoplanin are the two drugs which are going to inhibit the, the release of the building blocks and detachment from this C55 lipid carrier. So here you can observe that the muramic acid is having the pentapeptide chain. The last amino acid should be removed so that this muramic acid and glucosamine can be attached to the growing chain of the peptidoglycan layer. So this step is going to be blocked by vancomycin as well as trichoplanin. Therefore, these drugs are going to inhibit the cell wall synthesis in the bacteria. Particularly, these drugs can be used in the treatment of MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus infections, as well as Clostridium difficile. This is one of the organgium which produce the diarrhea in the patients by producing the pseudomembranous colitis. In such situations, we can use the vancomycin as well as tycoplanin. We have another drug like the telavancin. Telavancin is a related drug which is also acting like the vancomycin. So it is also going to inhibit the release of the building block from the C55 lipid carrier. Third one is a membrane depolarization. So here the drug is not acting on the cell wall synthesis, but it is going to produce the dysfunction of the cell membrane. So one of the drug is the daptomycin. Daptomycin is going to act on the cell membrane and it produces a rapid depolarization of the cell membrane. Because of the rapid depolarization, it produces an alteration of the cell membrane. So membrane related functions are going to be inhibited by daptomycin. And this daptomycin can be used in the conditions like the MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, as well as VREF, vancomycin resistant enterococcal fecium. In such cases, daptomycin can be used. And already we have seen one more drug, uh, telavancin. Telavancin is going to inhibit the release of the building blocks. As well as this drug can also act like the daptomycin so that it is going to alter the membrane potential and inhibit the membrane related functions in the bacteria. So telavancin acts like both vancomycin as well as daptomycin. Fourth drug target is the cross-linking between the peptidoglycan layers. Now already we have seen that at the outer membrane, the peptidoglycan layers are forming a mesh-like structure by forming a cross-link case. So here the third amino acid of the muramic acid of one layer is forming a cross-link with the fourth amino acid of the other muramic acid of the second layer. So this cross-link is very important in order to form the mesh-like structure outside the cell membrane. This crucial step is going to be inhibited by so many types of drugs which are called as beta-lactam antibiotics like the penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems and monobactams. All these drug targets are going to act on the cross-link case thereby inhibit the cell wall synthesis. So Penicillins can be classified into four categories like the natural penicillins which include the penicillin G as well as penicillin V. Similarly, anti-staphylococcal penicillins like the methicillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin and nafcicillin. Extended spectrum penicillins which are active against the gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria like the ampicillin and amoxicillin. Similarly, anti-pseudomonal penicillins like the Carbenicillin, ticarcillin, and piperacillin. All these are the different types of penicillins acting on the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. Similarly, other drugs like the cephalosporins. Cephalosporins include so many drugs like cephalexin, cefuroxim, cefutaxim, ceftazidim, cefixim, cefipim, 
Ceph trioxone. So many drugs are there. All these are having the prefix uh, Ceph. Similarly, the carbapenems, which are having the suffix penem, like doripenem, meropenem, imipenem, and etapenem. And finally, the monobactams, like the estrionum. All these drugs are going to act in a similar way. They are going to inhibit the cross-linking between the peptidoglycan layers. Fifth one is the reactivation of the lipid carrier. We have seen that C55 lipid carrier is going to transport the components across the cell membrane. During the transport, it is present as a diphosphate, but actually it is present as a monophosphate. So in order to reactivate the C55 lipid carrier, one of the phosphate groups should be removed from this so that the C55 lipid carrier is converted to a monophosphate form. So this is a reactivation of the C55 lipid carrier, which is required for the and the cycle of the transport of the building blocks across the cell membrane. Now one of the drug is the bacitracin which, which can form a complex with the divalent metals and this complex can then inhibit this uh, reactivation of the C55 lipid carrier so that the lipid carrier is not ready for the next cycle and the cell wall synthesis can be inhibited. So bacitracin is not a single drug it is a mixture of the drugs just like the polymyxins. So this Bacitracin can be used along with the other drugs like the polymyxins in the treatment of skin infections. So in this way we have so many drug targets acting on the cell walls of the bacteria. So particularly we have five types of drug targets. So first drug is the cycloserine which is going to inhibit the addition of the dipeptide to the tripeptide chain on the muramic acid. And second one is the vancomycin and tycoplanin which are going to inhibit the release of the building block. And third one is the daptomycin, which is going to alter the cell membrane potential. And fourth one is the beta-lactam antibiotics and related drugs, which are going to inhibit the cross-linking between the peptidoglycan layers. And fifth one is the bacitracin, which is going to inhibit the reactivation of the lipid carrier. So that's about the various drug targets acting on the cell wall synthesis. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.